Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da. Habita fillah, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hayyakum Allah jami'an. Continuing on with our study of Shara Sunnah, Lil Imam Muzni, we've reached the end of the treaties and we've reached after the discussion of Imam al-Muzni about the characteristics of the people of paradise and some characteristics of the people of the hellfire and some of the pleasures of Ahli Iman and Ahla Tawheed of going to paradise and what it entails and seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the highest uh, thrill and joy in Naim for the Mu'min is to see their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala who they believed in tabarak wa ta'ala in this life and they reap the reward of it in the hereafter and as we mentioned prior to this that the Salaf al-Salih Ridwanallahi alayhim used to say a, a, a dunya a dunya dar al-amal that this life is the time for doing righteous works and, and, and reaping or, or doing righteous deeds and doing goodness. And the hereafter is the time that you reap your reward for those seeds of righteousness. So after Imam al-Muzni's discussion of those important masail or issues, he discusses in his treaties the next chapter, which is towards the end of the, the book, which has to do with another important aspect of, cre of creed of Ahl Sunnati wa Jama'ah, and that is obedient, obedience to the Muslim ruler. And we'll talk in depth about the hikmah behind this, but most importantly, we'll go to the nusus, we'll go to the text of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. So, Qala Imam Muzani, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiya, he says, Wa ta'atul ul al amri fi ma kana inda Allah azza wa jal mardiyan, which tinabu ma kana inda Allah musakhatan, wa tarqal khuruji inda al ta'addihim wujurihim, wa tawbatu al Allahi azza wa jal kema. يُعْتَفُوا بِهِمْ عَلَىٰ رَعِيَتِهِمْ رَعِيَتِهِمْ Imam Muzani rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya He says that obedience to the ruler in whatever is pleasing to Allah and remaining far away from whatever is displeasing to him and abandoning revolt or revolution in response to their hostility and oppression, and repenting to Allah in order that they become inclined towards their subjects. Here Imam Muzani put forth an important principle of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Hadam in Ittaqad, Hadam in Minhaj. This is from the Minhaj, the methodology and the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And this is why you find in so many, if not, you can probably hardly name a classical text in creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Amongst the four different madhahib, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam, uh, 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 Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, all of the a'imma, in their books you'll find uh, this important principle of creed because this became codified with the early, at the time of uh, the tabi'een, with tabi tabi'een, after the time of the ittiba'a tabi'een especially, that it became an important part of creed and methodology that even if a ruler is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you do not rebel against them. That patience because this is what the, that patience with their oppression, with their tyranny, is better than spilling blood amongst the Muslims and the fulda 
that results from it, the chaos that results from it. And we're going to talk about in this discussion of this chapter, we're going to deal with those nusus, those texts, divine texts, meaning kitab illa wa sunnatu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then we're going to talk and some of the uh, statements of the a'imma and some of the wisdom behind that. And the wisdom is clear. We see it in contemporary times and throughout Islamic history. We see the harms and that's why Islam, in many of the uh, foundation principles, is looking at the what? The masaleh or the mufasid. The harms and the benefits. And weighing those harms and benefits, and from some of the qawaid al-faqiyah, is looking to, the, uh, to take, always taking, giving precedence to the, uh, what is more beneficial and not to that which is more harmful. And so Imam Muzani, he mentions this important aspect of the creed of Ahl Sunnah, and Sheikh Ahmed al-Najmi, Rahmatin Wasiya, he mentions some of the nusus from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to illustrate this very important point. He mentions first the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and this is evidence to show that there is no obedience to the creation at the expense of obedience to the Creator. Meaning, as the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam said, لا طاعة لي مخلوق في معصيتي خالق. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, there is no obedience to the creation over uh, in disobedience to the Creator. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's His haq. Haq Allah. Ali ibadi and ya'budu wa la yushriku bi shayin. It's the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we worship Him and Him alone. And part of worship is obedience to His commands. As the scholars, uh, the classical scholars referred to, the concept of taqwa is what? A taqwa is a uh, it is following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَرْكْ مَعْسِيَةِ And leaving off disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is uh, what some of the Salaf referred to as taqwa. That taqwa is putting a barrier between you and the hellfire by following the commands of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. And so it shows us that this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is ibadah. And so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, there's no obedience to disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that the, the scholars mention is that when we look at this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that it does not mean that we leave off all obedience to the leaders because this is what the Khawarij understood. The original sect, the Khawarij, who rebelled against the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and made takfir of them, that they understood that if you uh, disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you do the major sins, that you're, you're not a Muslim anymore. And they understood from the source like this, and in fact, they did not make ta'deem of the sunnah. They were very ignorant of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, but rather they tried to adhere to the Qur'an to the extent of their fahim, their understanding, instead of going back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those who were living at that time, which is the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'anhu majma'een. And so they understood, and even the later day Khawarij and Takfiriyin of this time, they understand that when you say La ta'ati lima khluk fi ma'asiyatillah, they understand how the, uh, that nullifies ta'a mutlaq, la abidin. That does not negate that you are obedient to the ruler in those things in which uh, in in other in all uh, obedience, but rather if they order you, for example, to drink alcohol, to do zina, to do some other thing, which there's no dispute that it is muharram, then you don't obey them in that. You do not obey them in that. 
in that affair, not in, it doesn't nullify their ta'a incompletely. So I hope that that understood. In another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith of Nafi' Ja Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu ila Abdullah ibn Muti' And in this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, man khalla yaddin min ta'atin laqi Allah yawm al-qiyama wala hujja wala hujja luhu. وَمَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ فِي عُنَكِهِ بَيْعَةً مَاتَ مَيْتَةٍ جَاهِلِيَةً The Prophet ﷺ said that whoever removes their hand from obedience to uh, the leader that he will meet Allah on the day of judgment and he will have no, he will not be able to argue his case. He will have no, uh, no chance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this affair because he disobeyed what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem wa ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul wa ula al-amri minkum that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem obey Allah and obey his uh, messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that's ta'a mutlaq obeying Allah and obeying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is complete without any dispute that, that, there's no question about that. If it's from the Quran and it's from the Sunnah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, then we obey it and there's no uh, disputing that issue. But when it comes to leadership, that is muqayyid. Uh, it is restricted in obedience. Meaning, we don't obey them in disobedience to Allah and the Messenger. It's not just because he's a ruler that we obey them. We obey them because Allah and his Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, commanded us to and the condition of that obedience is that he is ruling by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, that he is commanding you with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in fact, by obeying him, you're obeying Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, وَمَنْ مَاتَ لَيْسَ فِي عُنَكَهِ بَيْعَ مَاتَ مَيْتَةٍ in جَاهِلِيَ And the one who, you know, has removed this bay'ah, who, who, who dies in a state, and they don't have this um, obedience to the leader, they don't have this allegiance to the leader on obedience to Allah, then they uh, die the death of the people of ignorance. This doesn't mean they're disbelievers, so it's very important, but it's a, a threat of a severe punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. وعن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من كري من أميره شيئا فليصبر عليه فإنه ليس أحد من الناس خرج من السلطان شبرا فمات عليه إلا مات ميتة جاهلية. The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in the hadith of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما that whoever dislikes or detests something from the emir. You know, that he, dis, he dislikes, he hates something from the, his leader. The Prophet ﷺ said, what? And this is, uh, uh, this is Amr. This siga to kalam, this section of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, this statement is uh, a command. And we know the asal of a command in the shara. As the scholars of usul mentioned, the usul of fiqh and waqa'id faqiyya, the usuliyun, they say that al-amr yufid al-wujub wa al-nahi yufid al-tahreem. That when there's a command in the Qur'an or the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, the asl of that command, the origin of that command is it's an obligation. And when there's a prohibition from the Quran or from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the asl of that prohibition is that it's muharram, it's impermissible, unless illa, unless there comes other evidences from the Quran or the Sunnah to show that it isn't, uh, you know, that it lessens the prohibition, makes it makru, or uh, that the uh, the other command shows that something that appears wajib, is mustahab, it's recommended, or so on and so forth, related to the ahkam. So this is very important for us to understand. Here the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us which is an act of ibadah. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man kariya min amirihi shayin fal yasbar alayhi. Whoever sees something from the amir, from the, from the leader, that he dislikes, then be patient upon it. 
Because verily there is no one from the people who leaves obedience to the leader, even a handspan, except that they uh, die the death of the people of Jahiliya. So it shows us the importance of being obedient to the leader and being patient with their mistakes, their sins, their faults, and their tyranny. That this is an act of ibadah. This is not from our hawa. And it shows us the mufasid. We see the mufasid in, in our contemporary times where so many people, either they, the, the takfirin that are on the midhaj of the khwarij, like Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, and uh, these other groups, uh, Daesh and so forth, that they take the path in the usul and the foundation principles of the khwarij. They believe in, in bloodshed. That's how they believe in rectifying the leaders and rectifying the ummah's problems. Other groups believe that th through uh, sh uh, uh, protest and other uh, things and abstaining from the commands of the ruler that they're going to find success. And most of the time, more often than not, you find it's mafasid in all situations and destructive for the people and destruction for the Bilad al-Muslimin, for the Muslim countries and destruction uh, of property and wealth and lives. Wallahu musta'an. In another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and the Hukal, Men Kharaja Men Ta'a, Wa Farak al Jama'a, Famata, Mata, Mata, Mata Tin Jahiliya, Wa Men Qatil, Tahto, Rayatin, Umiyatin, Yabluli Asabiya. O yid'u ila asabiyya, O yansir asabiyya, fakutil, fakatlahu jahiliyya. Wa man kharja an ala ummati yadrib barraha wa fajraha, wa la yatahasha min mu'minaha, wa la yafi lithi أهدن أهدها أهده فليس مني ولست منه. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه, that whoever leaves the the jama'a, the main body of the Muslims, they divide. Whoever leaves uh, obedience to the ruler and divides the ummah, you know, leaves the jama'ah and they die, then they die the death of the people of Jahiliyyah, as we mentioned prior to this. And whoever fights under the banner of, uh, you know, nationalism or this pride or prejudice, then, or they call to it, or they assist it, then they also have died the death of Jahiliya. And whoever leaves my nation, and they raise the sword and fight the pious of them, and the wicked from amongst them, uh, and is not concerned about the believers, and fights them, then they are not from uh, me, nor am I from them. So here we see from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam distanced himself sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from those people who uh, left the main body of Muslims. Who, what did what the Khawarij do? One of the reasons they're called the Khawarij because they made khuruj al hakam but also khuruj min al, min al uh, jamaat al muslimin that they, they left the, they went against the leader and they also divided the ummah, or they went and they split from the main body of Muslims. And this is a sifa, or a characteristics of the Khawarij and the Takfirin all throughout time. You see that they have their own groups. Jamaat al Takfir wa Hijjah, for example, that was in Egypt, and all the groups that spread from their methodology. And they believe that they're the only real Muslims, the only legitimate Muslims. Sometimes that they are the only Muslims, period. And then they make takfir of the other Muslims and they go against them and they go against the Muslim rulers. So you see that this is a methodology and minhaj and the end result of that minhaj as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said is mata maitatin 
uh, jahiliya, that the per, that the people who do this, that they die the death of the people of ignorance, and that those people who fight for other causes, that are, instead of for the sake of Allah Azawajal, according to the book and the Sunnah, and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, that they are fighting for the shaitan and they are fighting for their desires and they also die if they die in this manner they die the death of the people of the days of ignorance and then in a very important hadith that the the sheikh mentioned the hadith of hudayfa bin yaman radiyallahu ta'ala an qal qultu ya rasulullah inna kunna fi sharr fa ja'a allah bi khair fa nahnu fi فَهَوْ مِنْ وَرَاءَ هَذَا الْخَيْرِ شَرْرِ قَالَ النَّعْمْ قُلْتُ فَهَوْ وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ الشَّرْرِ خَيْرٌ قَالَ النَّعْمْ قُلْتُ فَهَوْ وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ الْخَيْرِ شَرْرِ قَالَ النَّعْمْ قُلْتُ كَيْفْ قَالَ يُكُونُ بَعْدِ أَئِمَّةٌ لَا يَهْتَدُونَ بِهَدَايَةٍ وَلَا يَسْتُنُونَ بِسُنَّتِ وَسَيُقُومُ فيهم رجال قلوبهم قلوب الشياطين في جث جثمان الإنس قلت كيف أصنع يا رسول الله إن أرق إن أدركت ذلك قال تسمى وتطيع للأمير وإن ضرب ظهرك وأخذ مالك فاسمع وتع The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in this long hadith the hadith uh, <clears throat> a hadith that is Ruya uh, Muslim that and also in Abu Dawood when Nisa'i in the hadith of Hudayfa the bin Yaman radiallahu ta'ala in which he said that I said to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, we used to be you know, living in evil or in an evil state. And then Allah came to us with this good. You know, Allah granted us this good, this guidance, this hidayah, this sunnah, this Islam. So that we are now in. After this time, will after this time of goodness, will there be evil? The Prophet ﷺ responded and said, yes. And then he said, and after that, Evil, will there be good? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And then he said, and after that good, will there be evil? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes. And then he said, and how? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, there will be after me imams that do not, uh, that are not guided by my guidance. And they do not follow my sunnah. And they will, there will be amongst you men whose hearts are like the hearts of devils in the body of, of humans. And then he said, <coughs> what should we do, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if this time comes to us, if this happens to us? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, hear and obey the Emir, the leader. Even if he beats your back and takes your wealth, Hear and obey. This hadith, Ahabat uh, al is an immense hadith without going into, you know, it, it in and of itself is a madrasa. It's a school and full of, of, of benefits, minhajiya, you know, of, of benefits that are methodological in their uh, approach on how Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah deals with with even tyrannical tyrannical leaders that we do not rebel that we hear and obey the leader in that which is good going back to the first hadith that we mentioned that this is a part of the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why would the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam say this in so many hadith in sahih muslim you have a chapter called kitab al imara the whole book is filled with 119 uh narrations that I counted that uh, mentioned the importance of leadership and obeying the leadership even if he's disobedient, even if he uh, oppresses you, that you must be patient. 
This is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu This is the minhaj, the methodology of the Salaf al-Saleh. And there's no debate for that. There's no looking at what Ikhwan al-Muslimin says. There's no looking what Jamaat al-Takfir wa Hijra says. There's no looking at what Al-Qaeda says. There's no looking at what uh, Daesh says. There's no looking at what the original Khawarit says. It, it doesn't really matter because the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is what you're going to be held to account for. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, If tarakatil yahud ala ith wa sab'in firqa, wa if tarakatil nasara ala ith natain wa sab'in firqa, wa sa taftariku hadhi umma ala thalatha wa sab'in firqa, kullaha thin naal ala wahida, kulla min hiya ya Rasulullah, kala min kana ala mithil ma kana alayhi wa sahabi al yawm, kama kala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet وسلم, said, The Jews will break into 71 sects, the Christians 72 sects. My Ummah will break into 73 sects. And guess what he وسلم, then said? He وسلم, said, All of them in the hellfire. And they said, uh, Ya Rasulullah, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, Kul Wahida. He said, All of them in the hellfire except one. The, then the Sahaba, they said, Man, here, Ya Rasulullah, who are they? Because that was their hirs al ilm. They wanted to know. Hirs al jannah, hirs al khair. They, want, they were vigilant in seeking knowledge. They were vigilant in doing good. They were vigilant in trying to get to paradise. Man, here, Ya Rasulullah, they wanted to know, not just for the sake of knowing, not just for collecting hadith, not just for no, uh, general knowledge and understanding. They wanted to know what was going to get them to paradise. They wanted to know what was the right way, what was in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, not in accordance to the manahij, not in accordance with the various guidance, the very various groups and jama'at that are calling to bid'ah and calling to the nar. So the Prophet وسلم, they, they said, Men here, Ya Rasulullah, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He sallallahu alayhi wa said, Men kana ala mithil ma kana aliyya wa sahabi. Those were upon what I'm upon and my companions. Radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een. That is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa regarding these Masail. And this is why Imam al Muslim. Uh, dealt with this issue that you'll find in all the books. How many of the books go to Aqidah to uh, Wasatiyah, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, but let's go way before. Uh, let's go to uh, Aqidah al-Tahawiyya, Imam al-Tahawi, who was Hanafi, uh, you know, in his fiqh. Let's go back to Imam Abu Hanifa himself in Fiqh al-Akbar. Let's go back, uh, let's go, this text we're studying, uh, Shar sunnah Imam al -Muzni. Let's look at Shar uh, Itiqad al al qai uh, Let's look at uh, As-Sunnah lil khalal Let's look at Shar uh, sunnah li Imam Babahari, all these Imams of the Sunnah, and we could just sit here and rattle off hundreds of books in Aqidah. Imam uh, Abi Zayd al Qayrawani, uh, you know, who was Maliki. How many of the Ahmad al Muslimin, the Ahmad al Ahl Sunnah, wrote about these issues and codified these issues and let us know that the minhaj of the Salaf al Salih is to Tamasik bi Kitabillah, wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and to stay away from the manahij, the ways of the mukhalifin, those people who differ, and those people who differ with regards to this issue of takfir, and those people who differ with regards to the status of the leaders, how we should uh, deal with them. We don't obey them in disobedience. We don't put them above their level. We don't worship them. We only obey them because Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that. And we obey them in their obedience to Allah. So in fact, they are just a wasila. They are just a means for obeying the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal. And even if a disbeliever commanded you to obey something of Allah, you still have to obey it. Why? Is it because of the disbeliever? La! It's because it's the command of Allah. So we have to have this, this uh, correct to sower. Because many people, they the the mas'ala is based on their desires the mas the the, the mas'ala is based on their hawa instead of going back to the book back to the sunnah they always they want to cause doubt in the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and say no that is that part is da'if or the murji'a put that in or this and that all these shubahat but they have no dalil for what they say it's hawa it's desires and it is based on a, a, a manahij bid'iya, different methodologies of bid'ah, not one, different methodologies of bid'ah. 
And so we have to go to the Usul of Ahl Sunnah, and that's why we're even studying this Mas'ala. The Prophet والسلام, said in another hadith, Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is the hadith of Arfaja, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Yaqul, men attackum wa amarakum jameen ala rajalin wahid. Yuridu an yashakka asakum wa yafarat jama'atukum faqtuluhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this shows us the importance of sticking with the main body of the Muslims and sticking with the leader, that if someone comes and they appear and they want to divide the, the, the break the jama'at, the jama'at of Muslimin, the main body of the Muslims, and they want to call you away from the leader, that this person, in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and how they understood it, this person should be uh, killed and disposed of. Why? Because they are bringing mafasid. They are causing division. They are causing harm. And this is why, one of the evidences of why the Salaf believe in fighting the Khawaris. Khawaris were Muslim. Okay, some of them, some of the Salaf did make takfir of the Khawarij. Okay? But mostly, they held that they were Muslims that were rebellious. And this comes from statements of the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'anhu, like Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiyallahu ta'anhu, wa ghayrihim, that they held that they were rebels, that they were uh, making khuruj, but they were still Muslim. They were just Muslims, they were fasik. They were wicked in their, and sinful, because they were disobeying Allah and disobeying His Messenger and bringing the creed of bid'ah, of takfir. Uh, and takfir without the conditions, the shurut, wa muwana, wa dhawabit, the criterion, the conditions, and the prohibitors of takfir, they didn't bring that. Instead, they came based upon their desires, what they felt uh, a person was a disbeliever for. So this is why, and also, be, more importantly, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, which is mansus on the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, that he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, said that, uh, the Khawarij Kilab al Nar, the Khawarij of the Dogs of the Fire, and he sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam also said that if the, these people arise, meaning the Khawarij, then fight them. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded to fight them because of their danger and that they would bring upon the planet not just the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, but their mafasid reaches everywhere. In another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is the hadith of Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha. Uh, and this is, uh, in this hadith, and this hadith is in, uh, you'll find it in Sahih Muslim, and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Satakum umrah, فَتَعْرَفُونَ وَتَنْكِرُونَ فَمَنْ عَرَفَ بَرِي وَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ سَلَّمْ وَلَكِنْ مَنْ رَضِيَ وَتَابِعْ قَالُوا أَفَلَا نُقَاتِلُهُمْ قَالَ لَا مَا صَلُّوا So here the Prophet wasallam gave us something which is مُقَيِّد and gave us a, a, a shart, in fact, a condition that you don't fight and rebel against the leader even if they, they may be calling to munkar. They may be calling to sinfulness, that they may, uh, 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 you know, instead of doing the good and you want to do the good and the evil, that you don't rebel against them. That as long as they pray, the Prophet ﷺ said at the end of the hadith, قَالْ مَا صَلُّوا As long as they pray. And there are so many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu was salam, in which he, he mentioned, for example, in another hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in which he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <coughs> and this is the hadith of Awf ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, and this is a hadith in Sahih Muslim, anna Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khair al-ummatakum, khair al-ummatakum, الذين تحبونهم ويحبونكم وتصلون عليهم ويصلون عليكم والشرار أئمتكم الذين تبغون تبغضونهم ويبغ ويبغضونكم 
وتلعنونهم ويلعنونكم قالوا قلنا يا رسول الله أفلا ننابذهم عند ذلك قال لا ما أقام فيكم صلاة ألا من ولي عليه وال فراه يأتي شيء من معصية الله فليقره ما يأتي من معصية الله ولا ينزعنا يد من طاعة The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in this hadith He said the best of the imams or the leaders are those who uh, you love and they love you and they pray on you over you and you pray over them so you know there's a love there's a uh, uh, you know they're take they're doing their duties to you and you then in turn respect them as well and the worst of the leaders are those who uh, you hate and they hate you and you curse them and they curse you and then it was asked so they said the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala said ya rasulullah o messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam shouldn't we remove them you know shouldn't we you know remove them now and get rid of them the prophet alayhi salatu says la he said no as long as they establish the prayer this is another narration and verily the one who uh, is a leader over you and he comes with something from disobedience to a law and that you hate it because it, it comes from it comes from disobedience to a law and do not remove yourself from the obedience of the leader meaning following the leader don't remove your hand from ta'atillah or ta'ati uh, amir do not leave the jama'ah do not leave uh, obeying the amir the the leader in righteousness this is very important and this is another important hadith also in the hadith of ubadah ibn samit radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal da'ana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam fabay'nahu فَكَانَ فِيمَا أَخْذَ عَلَيْنَا أَنْ بَيَعْنَا عَلَى سَمْعِ وَالطَّاعَةِ فِي مُنْشَتِنَا وَمَقْرَهِنَا وَعُسْرَنَا وَيُسْرَنَا وَأَثْرَةٍ عَلَيْنَا وَأَلَا نُنَازِعَ الْأَمْرَ أَهْلُهُ قَالَ أَلَا أَنْ تَرَوْ كُفْرٍ بَوَاعٍ عِنْدَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِيهِ بَرْحَانٍ This is a very important hadith of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that you'll find in Bukhari and Muslim and this is a hadith of uh, Ubadah ibn Samit radiyallahu ta'ala an, in which he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, called us and he, uh, you know, made us take the bay'ah. You know, we took the Pledge of Allegiance to him. And we took the Pledge, in, pledge of Allegiance to hear and obey. And this would be during time in, in that which we, were, we loved and that which we disliked. And that which was easy upon us and that which was difficult upon us. <clears throat> and that we would not remove ourselves from the, you know, uh, from obedience to the ones who are, who are leaders, the ones who have the haq, the right of being leaders. And he said, uh, and as long as you do not, as long, so then the Prophet ﷺ made it muqayyid. He made it restricted. He said, as long as you do not see open disobedience that's clear it's indisputable disobedience uh indisputable disbelief that you have um proof from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is indisputable so that means it's not something yakhtalafi that the scholars differ over but this is something wade this is something clear this is something indisputable that it's disbelief and there's no uh, other uh you know, way of approaching it. So it shows us the caution in which we have to exercise those, uh, the creed, uh, the, the principles of takfir. That these are not light manners, uh, matters. These are not easy things that we can just blow off and we can just uh, rush to. And there are so many ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which show us the wickedness of khuruj, of disobeying uh, the leader. Uh, Sheikh uh, Imam Ahmed al-Najmi he, he ends his discussion after all of this adilla and there's so much to say about this but we're going to keep it uh, somewhat concise 
he says uh, some of the things that we benefit from this uh, uh, this lesson about and these group of nasus, these group of texts about the with regards to the leader is that there are two types of khuruj he mentions that there are two types of ways that people revolt against a leader he says one type is the khuruj with the saif you know khuruj uh, diso revolting uh, physically against the ruler with weapons taking up arms against the rulers and anything that resembles that that's the one kind. Then he said the second type type is khuruj kawliya. So this is where a lot of the tekfiris, they don't realize and they don't care really. In fact, and many of other Muslims who may not be uh, tekfiri, but they, they may be affected by that creed because they don't like disobedience to Allah and they don't like tyranny. No one likes tyranny. No one likes disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's the methodology of how we deal with that. Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah says, we don't uh, rebel against the leaders, nor do we spend and spend our time and our efforts causing the people to hate the leaders. It's going to be a natural implication, but instead we'll encourage the people to be patient and to come back to Allah, so Allah will give them leaders that will be obedient to Allah and respectful of their rights. But the others, instead, they spend their time and their energy making khuruj qawli. So the shaykh, he mentions, that is when a person speaks about the uh, the leaders, speaks and talks about their faults, exalts, you know, spends time talking about their faults with no benefit. There's no uh, uh, a benefit of that. There's no maslaha. It's not for their maslaha of getting their rights, but instead they're just complaining just to get the people to hate them more. And then perhaps the weak amongst those people will actually take a, a physical approach. So you see the wickedness that Ahl Sunnah cuts that door. They sadadariya that they take the principle in which they close the door. So they define khuruj, this disobedience, or this going out and rebelling against the leader in two forms. And this uh, goes back to the Salaf, that they understood not to speak about the leaders, because the ones who sp spoke about the leaders were often either the Khawarij themselves, or that they were uh, heading in that direction, or they encouraged the people to uh, follow that same methodology regarding that issue. So why that's why it's so important to restrain your tongue and may Allah forgive us of our many sins, all of us, for our indulging in these affairs and to be patient and stick with the ulama of Ahl Sunnah and the methodology of Ahl Sunnah, be strictly adherent to it and avoid any and all forms of false methodologies which call to rebelling against the ruler either by speaking against them in wicked ways which have no benefit. All it does is paint an even worse picture of someone who's maybe openly sinning. What benefit do you gain in a secret gathering or, or, or any type of gathering and you're just sitting there speaking about the leaders? It just makes you feel better and, uh, about yourselves and it makes you feel worse about the leader and to encourage more hatred towards them. Instead of making dua that Allah rectifies them. And this is what some of the a'imma to sunnah, what they used to do is they used to supplicate for the disobedient ruler. And Imam Ahmed, it's related uh, in a narration on him that he said, if I had a dua that was one dua to be accepted, it wouldn't be for myself. It would be for the Muslim ruler that Allah rectifies him because through his rectification, the Muslim's properties are safeguarded and the Muslim, the whole society, the community is safeguarded. If he's good, then there will be goodness in society. But if it's just about me, of course, then that's very limited rectification. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.